I aspire to, uh, to greatness. An Olympic hopeful with gold medal dreams. I really believed uh, were achievable for me. Until this former ski star wiped out. My name is Scott Arnold, and I used to be a dumpster diver. Plus. Basically, I had tumors in my body. Cancer riddled her body. Was pretty much near death. How she was healed without surgery. Welcome to the 700 Club on the East Coast. It's been hot, 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 hot. Mm -hmm. Records broken day after day. And tonight, the hot air will go out again as the Republican presidential race starts up with a face-off in primetime debate in Manchester, New Hampshire. Well, Pat, you know, David Brody is a phenomenal reporter, and he comes with us today with a story about voters in this early primary state who appear to be in a Tea Party frame of mind. This is not your typical New Hampshire indoor picnic lunch. This one is filled with elephants. It's the Hillsborough County Republican Picnic, considered one of the biggest 2012 campaign kickoff events. But hot dogs and hamburgers are not the only item on the menu. So are the topics of the budget and high unemployment, the top two concerns of New Hampshire voters. So it's no coincidence that you see Tea Party souvenirs and hear a familiar agenda. I think New Hampshire is the Tea Party voters. You know, you know the, the, the uh, uh, principles that you're now seeing as Tea Party across the country have always been New Hampshire principles. New Hampshire is a state that had been a very conservative state for a long time. And it's not as much now that it, as it used to be but it's definitely we're leading that way again and we want some, to see some major changes. We're in trouble. We don't want no candy coating. We want to hear that we're in trouble because that will rally people and I want to hear solutions of what they're going to do. Some GOP candidates like Tim Pawlenty and Herman Cain came to oh, yeah. offer hey, what you? voters want to hear. I have run stuff, fixed stuff, turned stuff around, started stuff and solve the stuff. I have a long record of stuff, and I want to take it to the White House. Whether it's Republican picnic events like this, or for that matter, any event in New Hampshire, you're going to see all of the GOP candidates show up. That is not the case in Iowa, the state that votes before New Hampshire. There are a few candidates that are just not competing in Iowa, like Mitt Romney and soon-to-be presidential candidate John Huntsman. That state's a little too conservative for a couple of those candidates, but here in New Hampshire, it's a free-for-all. Mitt Romney is banking on a win here to propel him to victory, much like a 2008 win did for John McCain. His opposition knows that they need a stop here or Romney could run away with the nomination. Candidates like Tim Pawlenty are up here hitting the tavern circuit to appeal to Republican voters hit hard by the economy. Barack Obama and his administration last summer said it was going to be the summer of recovery. Remember that? Recovery summer. How was your recovery summer? Not so good. Yeah? You didn't need to get too much SPF out for that, did you? <laughs> this early debate is important because polls up here show that nearly three quarters of voters haven't made up their mind yet. I'm one of those. Uh, I have not uh, jumped on anybody's campaign right now. I'm in uh, education mode. And folks in this key state know they play a big role at the polls. In New Hampshire, politics, you know, this is Friday night football for us. This is our, our state sport. And the GOP crowd takes the field tonight with the goal of making a good first impression on the debate stage. David Brody, CBN News, in Manchester, New Hampshire. There was a time that uh, New Hampshire mirrored America. And so if somebody won in New Hampshire, he pretty much would be certain of winning uh, in uh, the country. That was a place where Ronald Reagan uh, said, I paid for that microphone. And he won essentially the uh, Republican nomination on, on his strong showing. They had uh, beautiful posters of Reagan with a cowboy hat and said, this is Reagan country. I mean, it was that he wore, you know, the typical Western garb to look like he was one of the mountaineers. But <clears throat> uh, New Hampshire is different. Uh, the people have come over from Massachusetts. It's much more liberal down in the southern part of the state. It doesn't reflect America anymore at all. 
And normally speaking, whoever's governor of Massachusetts is the guy who can win New Hampshire because he can send an army of people across the border. And it only takes about 35,000, 40,000 people to win that uh, primary. So they, they, maybe it's 70 or 80 now, but it isn't a big deal everybody makes it out to be. That's true. You know, as you're sitting here talking, I was mm. thinking about the story that we just saw and how more and more people are, they don't have as, uh, an alliance anymore to a particular party. More and more people are becoming uh, not necessarily independent, but trying to see which one is going to kind of go in their direction. Do you well, know what I mean? Yeah, well, in New Hampshire, though, I mean, you've got to, they, they say, well, I've got to shake the hand of the candidate about four or five times before I make up my mind. I mean, it's nonsense. You don't get that privilege anyplace else in the world. But it's all these coffees and these little clutches and these little town hall meetings. And I had a campaign manager who wanted me to shake, I think, 1,500 or 1,400 hands every day. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I was in factories and shopping malls. and I mean, I, I tell you, I, I wish, wish, wish in hindsight I had bypassed the state. It was not a good experience at all. But nevertheless, <clears throat> they're off and running, and uh, we'll see what happens. Because the Tea Party may have changed uh, the equation in, in New Hampshire. It made me go back to being conservative as it used to be. Well, you can keep up with the latest from David Brody on the presidential race by checking out the Brody file on CBNNews.com. And Lee, New Hampshire, brother, Florida, whatever. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a state. Uh, and speaking of those economic issues, Pat, that Tim Pawlenty and others were talking about, many Americans may not be able to retire until they're in their 70s or even 80s. That's according to a recent study from the Employee Benefit Research Institute. Lower income Americans will have to work the longest just to afford basic necessities after they retire. The earlier you start saving, of course, the better. And the longer people work past 65 and the longer they keep contributing to their retirement plans, the better off they'll be after they stop working. Falling real estate prices are still eating away at the equity in American homes. It's near its lowest point since World War II. Average homeowners own just 38% of their homes now, compared to 61% a decade ago. Home equity usually goes up as people pay off their mortgages, but uh, falling home prices mean Americans are losing value in their homes even as they reduce their mortgage debt, Pat. Just think, this goes all the way back to World War II. Let, 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 let's say 1945, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 200. That's a long time. And during all that period of time, houses, house values went up. And so it was considered the safest investment. And everybody thought, well, I can invest in my home and then I can draw money out. It's like an ATM machine. I can pull out uh, money for a second mortgage and whatever. And uh, suddenly that dream is shattered. And the wealth of a vast number of Americans is no longer there. And it's having a huge impact. It'll have a more impact on they won't be able to shop as much. They won't be able to buy securities. They won't be able to take vacations. They won't be able to do a lot of things because they don't have the money. And it was tied up in real estate, which has taken another hit. So it's it's kind of sad, but it'll it'll be one more uh, nail, if you will, in this uh, economic coffin that is being built in Washington. Lee. Pat, Turkey's Islamist-based AKP party kept its power in this weekend's elections. Many analysts, though, are concerned it will lead to a more radical form of Islam in that country. Chris Mitchell has the story now from Istanbul. This is the one some consider the new strongman in the Middle East, the most powerful leader in the Muslim world, and a politician the U.S. and Israel will have to contend with for at least the next four years. His AKP party won 50% of the vote and 325 seats in Turkey's parliament. It gives the AKP a big majority, but not enough seats to independently rewrite Turkey's constitution, their main goal. Many feared if they won enough seats in parliament, they'd rewrite Turkey's constitution and institute Sharia law. But the results do accelerate Turkey's growing influence in the region. With Turkey literally straddling Europe and Asia, the Turks see themselves as a nation of bridges. The government is also building political bridges within the Muslim world, positioning itself to fill a power void left by declining U.S. influence in the Middle East. That's why Erdogan said after Sunday's victory, believe me, 
Sarajevo won today as much as Istanbul. Beirut won as much as Izmir. Damascus won as much as Ankara. Ramallah, Nablus, Janine, the West Bank, Jerusalem won as much as Daya Bakir. The government insists its agenda is to implement a Western-style democracy. But some see a number of warning signs behind that claim. More journalists are in jail in Turkey than most any other nation. And the government plans to restrict internet use in August. Another concern, the AKP and Erdogan are closely linked to the Fatullah Gulen movement, whose agenda is to achieve world domination through Islam. And Middle East expert Daniel Pipes warned Sunday's election might be the last fair and free ones in Turkey. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Istanbul. Pat, what are your concerns about this? Well, very much, uh, Lee. You remember, you go back and the Turks were the uh, Ottoman Empire, and that, of course, was an Islamic organization that was reaching, trying to take domination, not only in the Middle East, but domination over Europe. And uh, they came right to the gates of Vienna a long time ago, and then they finally uh, were uh, overcome. But uh, the uh, Ottomans dominated the Middle East. They dominated Jerusalem. They dominated the holy sites. And <clears throat> they took over Constantinople and turned the Agha Sophia church into a mosque. I mean, it was a bad thing. Now, what's happening next? Uh, the Ataturk in the 20s, uh, came in and he said, we're going to have a secular country. We're not going to have a religious country. And so suddenly there's a fresh wave of uh, freedom and uh, the Turks uh, became strong allies. They were called the sick man of Europe, but nevertheless, they, they were opening up. And suddenly what is written in prophecy is starting to take place. Read the 38th chapter of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And when you see a coalition coming against Israel in the latter days, it includes something, I think uh, the term is Gomer, and it's, Gomer's not Germany, it's, it's more likely Turkey, and Turkey would be in the coalition against Israel. And you hear what uh, uh, the victor of this election was saying, my victory has something to do with Yugoslavia, it has something to do with Damascus, it has something to do with the Holy Land. They're not thinking small, and they're thinking Sharia, and they're thinking restore the caliphate and all that stuff that goes on. It's happening before our eyes. So am I concerned about it? Absolutely. Lee? Yesterday was Pentecost Sunday. Millions of Christians in more than 200 nations came together to cry out to God on the global day of prayer. For the first time in its 11-year history, a U.S. city hosted the main event. Ephraim Graham has that story. Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, Florida hosted the world's largest prayer gathering. The kickoff event held on the eve of the Global Day of Prayer united Christians around the globe by satellite. Let us right now put our voices together and our hands together and welcome the rest of the world to Jacksonville, Florida. Global Day of Prayer founder Graham Power set the tone putting the focus on God. So this is not about big names, it's not about artists, this is about humbling ourselves and praying. Then, Jacksonville's pastors took to the stage to lead the world in prayer. Together with believers all over the world, we gather to get today to glorify your name. You are the creator of heaven and earth. There is no one like you, holy and righteous in all your ways. They prayed in many languages. Similar scenes took place across the world on Pentecost Sunday. In this town square in Mexico City, Christians prayed to the Lord to stop the violence, kidnappings, and drug trade that is destroying their country. They prayed for 24 hours straight. The Philippines held the first ever Kids Global Day of Prayer, building up young people to carry the mantle of prayer into the future. I've learned that today we must pray for other people. Lord, please take care of the poor people. Please give them homes. Please give them enough food that they could eat. In Romania, they prayed all day long, asking God for renewal in the church, reform in government and media, and victory over societal evils like abortion and human trafficking. In London, rainy weather forced the celebrations inside. Nevertheless, Christians in 33 boroughs across the city took part. 
Back in Jacksonville, the Global Day of Prayer passed the baton to church leaders in Jakarta, Indonesia, next year's host city, and wrapped up by proclaiming once more, The Spirit and the Bride says, say it with me, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Ephraim Gray, CBN News. Pat, I'm proud of uh, Jacksonville for hosting that. I had the privilege of living and working there for 10 years and uh, a lot of great Christian folks down there. They really are. That's a beautiful thing. And to think all around the world, people praying, God will hear those prayers. Christy? Absolutely. I love that. Speaking mm. of prayers, we have a story of a pastor who is shocked when he discovers his elderly neighbor has no food. We have some stale, some molded bread that we toast and we scrape it. And, and that's what we're using right now. And it just blew my mind. And I had no idea it existed. No idea. And I said, God, I got to help. Mm. Did you know that six million older Americans actually go to bed hungry every night? Well, meet the man on a mission to feed them when we come back. Then later on in today's program, we're going to bring it on online. So if you have a question for Pat, all you got to do is log on to CVN.com and bring it on with it. Still ahead, a beautiful young woman riddled with tumors. They weren't just in my chest, but they were also within my ovaries and my thyroid. Doctors planned surgery. Which would have left me totally disfigured for the rest of my life. But this patient planned for a three-day miracle. I've seen miracles and I know you can do it, but are you really gonna do it for me? Hi there, neighbor. Pat Boone here from my good friends at Swiss America, the company that makes retirement dreams come true with gold. A lot of folks are shifting a portion of their retirement funds into a new precious metals IRA with Swiss America. And since 2004, these IRAs are up in value over 150%. I've been a very satisfied client of Swiss America for many years now because they believe in honesty, fair prices, and superior service. It's time to put your financial future on a gold standard right now. I own gold because it's a hedge of protection for my family. Even my grandkids can see that our paper money is becoming less valuable every day. So call or visit Swiss America now. Ask for the Pat Boone free DVD and gold IRA kit. Get the best education you can on gold, the best asset to own during these uncertain times. Call or visit online now. Tomorrow, primetime propaganda, how Hollywood is pushing its agenda into your living room. Plus, first came the porn addiction. It was whatever I wanted it to be. Next, the mental breakdown. I think is your doctor that you're going crazy. What set his mind free? A greater high than logging onto porn. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. The economy is tough with over 9% unemployment. And the tough economy has caused millions of Americans struggling to put food on the table. For many older people, the situation is much worse. It's something that's kind of hidden from sight. We don't see much of it. But Charlene Israel went out to find out a pastor who's doing what he can to help feed the elderly in this very community. In 2008, Pastor Kenneth Bass Knight was shocked to learn of a huge problem facing seniors in his community. Many of them were hungry. One elderly neighbor told him, We have some stale, some molded bread that we toast and we scrape it. And, and that's what we're using right now. And it just blew my mind. And that started the pastor on a mission to feed as many hungry seniors as possible. And I had no idea it existed. No idea. And I said, God, I got to help. And out of every senior we fed, they either got 12 to $15 a month or they were denied food stamps for the month. Okay. Once a week, Pastor Bass Knight and his team of volunteers packed donated food to deliver to needy seniors across Hampton Roads, Virginia. We're talking about how many people per week or per month that you're actually we, we delivering doing about, to. Doing about 70 to 80 people a week. Okay, this is a complete care package. It has tuna fish, cornbread, gravy, fruits, um, string beans, black eyed peas, Uncle Ben's rice, uh, macaroni and cheese, and it's all complete. That's all in this Everything here? right here. That's amazing. Everything. And so it, you, one of these accompanies every bag of every food bag. you give to the senior. 
CBN News traveled with Pastor Bass Knight on a few of his deliveries. Man, we got you some eggs, chicken, we got drumsticks, wings. Many who live alone are grateful for the help. And it's all free. Thank you for bringing me that. I no problem. Use it. Prayers are also part of the deliveries. And we acknowledge that the food came from you, God. We're just the vessels that delivered it. And I was finding out as I was walking in the door, they would say, well, I'm so glad to see you. I missed you. It's not the food. They would always say, I just want this prayer. It's a fellowship. And, none, and most of them had nobody to come and see him. William and Doris Lincoln are both blind. William lost his sight after a stroke. Diabetes caused Doris to lose her sight. They live on a fixed income and struggle to put food on the table. The Lincolns are like millions of seniors all across this country who have to make the tough decision whether to buy groceries or pay for their medications. Like meds to control diabetes. Cost $170 for 90 pills. Well, it has not been filled yet now. It's, it's, it's there waiting. I haven't gone and got it. The couple says the food deliveries are an answer to prayer. And the Lord said that he would never leave us, never forsake us. He said he would open doors that no man could shut. And it had it been just that way when things were tough, that the Lord had been helping and that brother uh, Reverend here had been coming here and blessing us. Bass Knight admits delivering those blessings has not always been easy. The obstacle after the obstacle. As I remember one day we were delivering and um, we had no gas. We had enough gas to get started, but not enough gas to finish the route. People like the Lincolns are what keeps him going. Watching them after I leave with food and their refrigerator is full and knowing that they don't have to worry about their medicine. Charlene Israel, CBN News. Thanks, Charlene. It breaks your heart, doesn't it, mm -hmm. to think of a land of abundance such as America? Yeah. Christy, we, we throw away about 180 million tons of produce mm -hmm. a year, 180 million mm -hmm. tons of produce. Mm -hmm. And if you've got an organization like Operation Blessing, we can go out with trucks and pick it up and, and distribute it. But these poor people, they can't get out and yeah. see. Exactly. I was just sitting here thinking, oh, I'm like, yeah. there's such a need. And you know, you think about the people literally right next door right. Well, who needs next something. Next door to us. And thank God that pastor, he is a wonderful man. Exactly. But that shows you, keep your eyes open mm -hmm. for the, the need, because uh, it, 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 you see the surface and you see all the glitz and glamour or whatever is mm -hmm. there, but underneath there's a lot of pain. That's the Christian. truth. Well, up next, a young woman with piercing pain in her shoulder and a tumor in her chest. It was the size of a softball. The doctors performed a few more tests simply because I was unable to breathe. And at this point, they diagnosed me as being septic and um, was pretty much near death. Mm. Wow. But see how she was healed without surgery. Amazing. Plus, this is our opportunity a little bit later on where we're going to be praying for you and your needs. So please, whatever you do, don't go away. Coming up later. My name is Scott Arnold, and I used to be a dumpster diver. A bum who once had a dream. I aspire to, uh, to greatness as, you know, a, a gold medalist in the Olympics. So how did he fall so low? I was absolutely like an animal. Find out on today's 700 Club. I look back at those dumpsters, and it's like a nightmare. Freezer burn steak, $20. Dried out chicken, $15. Moldy cheese, $5. Stop throwing cash in the trash. Save money with the Food Saver System, the number one vacuum sealing system that keeps food fresh up to five times longer. Air can penetrate ordinary zipper bags. Food Saver bags keep air out, preventing freezer burn. With the Food Saver System, you can save up to $2,700 a year. Save now with the kitchen appliance that pays for itself in just weeks. Available wherever small kitchen appliances are sold. You never know when, but thieves can steal your identity. You know, I can save you 15% today if you open up a charge card account with us. You just read my mind. Just one piece of information, and they can steal your credit and ruin your reputation. You need LifeLock, relentlessly protecting your personal information to help stop the crooks before your identity is stolen. Credit monitoring only tells you after you've been attacked, but LifeLock's advanced ID alert system directly notifies you, protecting your identity before you become a victim.
No one can stop all identity theft. That's why you need the security of our $1 million service guarantee. Call now to try LifeLock risk-free for a full 60 days. If you're not completely satisfied, you won't pay a cent. Act now and get this document shredder at $29 value free. Call 1-800-926-2117 or go to LifeLock.com to try LifeLock risk-free for a full 60 days. Use promo code NORISK. Plus, get your free document shredder. Call 1-800-926-2117 now. LifeLock service guarantee cannot be offered to residents of New York. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Well, Carrie Lewis is the manager of an intensive care unit. In fact, she's, she's actually used to taking care of sick people all the time. So when she woke up one morning with a pain in her shoulder, she never even dreamed that within a week she would actually be fighting for her own life. Hi, my name is Kerry Lewis and I'm actually 32 years old, originally from the UK, but I have been residing in Cyprus for the past six years, working as an intensive care manager. And little did I know that one day, basically, I'd wake up and I would end up being the patient and no longer the actual manager of a unit. One Monday morning, I woke up with incredible pain just in the in my left shoulder blade and it radiated through by the end of the evening into the front of my chest. Within one week, basically, I ended up being admitted into the clinic due to such an increasing swelling in the left side of my chest that was the size of a softball. The doctors performed a few more tests simply because I was unable to breathe. And at this point, they diagnosed me as being septic and um, was pretty much near death. I was seen by several specialists and they realized that basically I had tumors in my body. They weren't just in my chest, but they were also within my ovaries and my thyroid. And um, this is what was making me sick. The doctors told me if I had surgery, they would have to remove the left shoulder blade and all, most of the left side of my chest, which would have left me totally disfigured for the rest of my life. We really took this um, in faith and in prayer to God and asked Him to make it clear um, as to whether He wanted to heal me miraculously through the supernatural or whether He wanted to heal me through the medical profession. And we asked that if He was going to heal me supernaturally, that He would do that within three days and that there'd be some kind of improvement within the size of the growth in my chest. With my mind, I'm thinking, Lord, you know, I've seen miracles and I know you can do it, but are you really going to do it for me? It was a time where I just also believed in medicine and this has been a huge part of my um, career. So it was a fine line for me to know where, where that fine line really was between the supernatural and the medical profession. The Lord just really kind of talked to my spirit during that time and He said, you know, it's not a point of understanding, it's a point of faith and it's a point of having a grateful and a thankful heart. And on the third day, um, I went down for my tests and basically I had my ultrasound and they told me that the growth had reduced by 0.03 millimeters. Even though it was so small, I was just so excited and we just wanted to worship God like, yay, you're actually performing this miracle for me. And I didn't know how long it would take, but we just were like so excited. God had started this healing process and He was faithful to finish what He had started. So we basically pressed in for healing for the rest of that week in the hospital. And the next Tuesday, it was to the point where it was so improved that the doctors allowed me to actually be released from the hospital and allowed me to go home and just be an outpatient for an entire week, going back to the clinic and having IV antibiotic therapy twice a day. I was supposed to go home and rest, but I took this rest in the form of attending um, a Catch the Fire conference that we were organized with. Um, and basically, I just rested in the presence of God and rested in just worshiping Him. And during this time, I've never felt such an incredible strength resonate throughout my body that just gave me such the power and the ability to worship and to attend the conference. I sometimes get flashing lights that are signposts of people who have angels of His presence. And I know you're really tired, but you have an angel of His presence who is ministering to you and is strengthening you right now. And we come against now anything that would hinder or delay 
Within two months, they had me go back for repeat tests and they basically told me that they could not find any trace of any lesion or tumor in my body at all, that all infection had completely disappeared and that I was perfectly healthy and full of life. I really felt that this one time in my life where I knew the devil was really trying to take me out of the picture, it was gonna be the time of, um, that the Lord was gonna take me on to great victory. He who promised is faithful. God is true to his word. God is a God of miracles. He's a God of power. And what you are standing in faith for, Pat and I are going to stand in agreement Amen. with you that it is done. Share with us. Absolutely. First, I want to encourage you, if you Amen. need more encouragement, okay. <laughs> from Mary from the Netherlands. She emailed us with this answer to prayer. She says her husband was injured. He injured his shoulder last December. A chiropractor actually determined that the shoulder had come out of the socket and worked it back in, but the pain did not subside. Mary's husband is self-employed and was under financial pressure, so he went three months without treatment. Last month, he was watching the 700 Club. Pat had a word of knowledge. And you said, Pat, there's a man, you chipped a bone in your shoulder, put your hand on your shoulder, and in the name of Jesus, be healed. Guess what? Immediately, Mary's husband felt the pain leave and has not returned. In the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, Pat. Wow. Okay. This is uh, Nancy, who is from a place called Felcroft, or Falcroft, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. disguised, uh, diagnosed with muscle injury, and was prescribed pain medication and heat therapy. Three weeks of rest and therapy, she improved, but uh, every few months she had recurring episodes. Mm. One day she was watching the 700 Club. She heard Christy say, the Lord is healing somebody with a torn or pulled tendon. Nancy immediately placed her hand on her back, claimed the healing, and guess what? Mm. By that evening, all the pain in Nancy's back and wherever was gone. Folks, God loves you. Mm -hmm. I can say it over and over again. He loves you. You know, I was reading today in Jeremiah, and God says, I am Yahweh. Hmm. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? I'm the one who created the world. Is it too hard for me to fix a muscle? Mm -mm. Is it too hard for me to take care of your finances? Is it too hard to heal your marriage? Of course not. God, I am the Lord of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Now, we're going to pray together. Christy and I are going to join hands. We're going to pray with you. And wherever you are, not only in the United States, but around the world, wherever you're watching this program, Father, nothing is impossible. We thank you for these answers to prayer. We thank you for the glory of the Lord. Somebody is very sick. You're vomiting right now, and you're just saying, oh, God, help me. It's just you've been having this terrible sickness in your stomach right now god is just reaching down you'll feel fire inside of your belly and and you are healed in the name of jesus christy the lord is healing someone who has issues with blood clots the lord is healing that situation right now and i just keep hearing the word aneurysm i don't know what's going on with that but lord we just bring that before you right now for your healing power to take place thank you lord there's a knee problem, and it's, it's like the meniscus is gone, and the, the knee is locking back and forth, and uh, I believe it's your left knee. Put your hand on your knee right now. You'll feel heat in it. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. The Lord is also healing someone with a strained, um, a strained muscle actually on your side where uh, you can hardly bend or move over. So what you could no longer do, you do it right now and in faith, and the healing power of Jesus Christ, you are healed. Thank it's you. Mary, and you've got a roaring in your ears. It's just unbearable, this, this loud noise. In Jesus' name right now, that noise has stopped. Your ear and your inner ear are healed in Jesus' name. Now, for all of you in this audience, you're having problems with finances, you're problem with your marriage, you're having problem with your health, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I am the Lord. I am Yahweh, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? And the answer is no, Lord. Nothing is too hard for you. And so we hold before you these needs. In the name of Jesus, we speak the word. Be healed. Receive a miracle. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! 
tell you, I love that, don't you? Don't you get Amen. all fired up? It's like, how can he kind of sit and be calm? Well, don't be calm. All right. Get happy. <laughs> come on now, get happy. All right. That's true. Whatever Cast the Lord all just your did, cares come away. On. Okay. Uh, call us if you have a, a need. You've got an answer to prayer. We'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. It blesses us. All right, Amen. Christy, what's next? Absolutely. Well, still ahead, he hoped to be an Olympic ski racer. Instead, he wound up a dumpster driver. I had to survive. And the only way I knew how was to get food out of dumpsters and to live out of them. I was absolutely like an animal. I, I wasn't like a human being. Well, find out why this man actually trashed his future. Find out on today's 700 Club. Insight into today's events, news you don't get anywhere else, and inspiring stories of hope. Now you can share them with your friends. Go to CBN.com to I Saw It on the 700 Club for a fast, easy way to share your favorite videos. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened in Israel. Come explore Jerusalem where Jesus opened blind eyes. Visit the hills of Galilee where Jesus fed the multitude. Stroll through Capernaum where Jesus lived and taught and healed. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. Welcome back to the 700 Club. New Zealand is rocked by its second earthquake in four months. It caused two buildings to collapse in the already quake damaged city of Christchurch. The U.S. Geological Survey recorded one aftershock today at 5.2. The largest one came at lunchtime and forced people to flee from buildings in panic. Back in February, a quake killed 181 people in Christchurch, New Zealand, and brought down the historic St. John's Church. Police say two people were trapped in that church today after the tremor, but they were rescued. Children in Cambodia are getting involved with the CBN World Reach television program Super Kids Club. World Reach staff put letter boxes outside of churches in the region. They encourage uh, children to write to the Super Kids Club. When the boxes are full, pastors send those letters to the CBN office, and CBN staff members respond to those letters. A record uh, was set for the most letters received in a single month. There are now 82 boxes set up throughout that region. And each letter is read and prayed over by the CBN staff. You can find out more about CBN World Reach by logging on to CBN.com slash World Reach. Pat and Christie will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct buy club is already awarded over a million dollars and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local direct buy club, where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items. Like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? Freezer burn steak, $20. Dried out chicken, $15. Moldy cheese, $5. Stop throwing cash in the trash. Save money with the Food Saver System, the number one vacuum sealing system that keeps food fresh up to five times longer. Air can penetrate ordinary zipper bags. Food Saver bags keep air out, preventing freezer burn. With the Food Saver System, you can save up to $2,700 a year. Save now with the kitchen appliance that pays for itself in just weeks. Available wherever small kitchen appliances are sold. Tomorrow. Primetime Propaganda, how Hollywood is pushing its agenda into your living room. Plus, first came the porn addiction. It was whatever I wanted it to be. Next, the mental breakdown. I think as your doctor that you're going crazy. What set his mind free? A greater high than logging onto porn. Tomorrow, 
on the 700 Club. Scott Arnold was once an award-winning skier with hopes of Olympic glory. But Scott's plans were derailed, and he ended up, horrible to think of, eating and living out of dumpsters for years. Well, my name is Scott Arnold, and I used to be a dumpster diver. I had to survive, and the only way I knew how was to get food out of dumpsters and to live out of them. For years, Scott Arnold spent his days wandering around in the scorching Arizona sun, rummaging through dumpsters and sleeping in alleys and ravines. It was a far cry from the life Scott thought he'd have when he was a boy. I aspired to, uh, to greatness, to um, having a life of um, winning, of being successful, of traveling the world and representing my country as, you know, a, a gold medalist in the Olympics. You know, those were things that were spoken into my life at a young age that I really believed uh, were achievable for me. Scott hoped to be an Olympic ski racer. He'd trained with the Swiss national ski team and even won the Vail Cup in Colorado. Skiing was his life. But when Scott's parents' business took a hit and they couldn't afford his training anymore, he was pulled from the sport and put into a private high school. Scott's parents thought this would set him on track towards college and a successful future, but it didn't. When I didn't have skiing to, uh, to be my center of my life, I started to flounder. On the slopes, Scott had only spent three or four hours in school each day. Now he was expected to excel alongside Harvard and Notre Dame hopefuls. I never measured up. I wasn't as intelligent as the rest of the, uh, the, my classmates. The fear of failure in my life really began to set in and grab a hold of me. So Scott turned to alcohol to escape his insecurities. I was not your average drinker. I was a tore up from the floor up drunk and I was the last one to leave a party. I never could stop. There was never one or two for me. It was always a dozen or more. And then there were the drugs. Sometimes it was marijuana, sometimes cocaine or LSD. And over time, he started using prescription drugs. Uh, Percocets, Vicodin, Hydrocodone. It kept me numb. Especially, it helped remove, erase the guilt that I had. The guilt of multiple DUIs, near-death accidents, a broken marriage, and the disappointment he brought to his parents. He tried to stop drinking and using drugs many times, and even went to Wyoming to rekindle his dream of being an Olympic skier. But of course, drugs and alcohol always got in the way. I always kept getting lured back into that, that, that thought that I could drink or drug just a little bit, and it never worked. I was absolutely like an animal. I, I wasn't like a human being. What finally broke the cycle was an encounter in the county jail. It was after years of living outside. I had mental uh, problems. I, I, was, I was talking to myself all the time. I was the most depressed human on the face of the planet. I felt like I was dying. And I went out into where they had the uh, jailhouse library. They push it around on a cart. And there was a Bible on that cart. And it had, uh, it was a Bible about breaking the chains in your life. I cried out to Jesus Christ desperately and I got on my hands and knees and I begged him to come into my life. As soon as I cried out to God like that, like I meant it, my heart changed. It was like a switch went on. I felt love. I felt the love of Jesus Christ replace every need that I ever had to use drugs and alcohol. I didn't have to be perfect anymore because only he is perfect. And he began to speak to me clearly. I heard the voice of God saying, read your Bible. After his release, Scott went through intense counseling and Bible study. Today, he says he has freedom and true success. He's married, has a home and a family, and works for a rehabilitation center, where he helps others out of the lifestyle he once lived. I look back at those dumpsters and those places where I used to smoke crack and drink, and it's like a dream, it's like a nightmare that used to happen in my life. I, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with the incredible power and the grace and mercy of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
But the most important thing that I could ever tell anybody is that obedience to Jesus Christ and His Word is the key that unlocks every stronghold that Satan tries to hold on us. That anybody who believes that they can find any fulfillment outside of Jesus Christ is lost because there's no other way to heaven but through the name of Jesus Christ. God is real. Jesus Christ is the answer. Boy. Jesus is real. What have you gone through? I don't know if you've hit it the bottom like Scott Arnold did, but you may be hooked up a little bit of cocaine, a little bit of meth, a little bit of marijuana, a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of porn. So on it goes, and then it'll get worse and worse and worse and worse. It's like trying to have a pet cobra in your house. They'll get worse and worse, and sooner or later they'll kill you. Do you want to be free? Jesus is here to bring you freedom. He's here for liberty. The last thing that he wants to do is to enslave you. He came to make you free. The lie of the devil is that Christianity is something that, that brings a power over your life and causes you to lose joy. Not true. It brings joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you could be free of whatever it is that is binding you, whatever it is. Do you want to be free? Would you like to know the answer to life? Would you like to have peace? If you would, I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to lead you in prayer if you'll pray with me. God Almighty will hear your prayer. He's going to transform your life. Pray with me right now. Don't be afraid. Wherever you are, men and women, boys and girls, wherever you are, husbands and wives, pray with me right now. Bow your head. These words, say them silently or say them out loud, but say them. Jesus, that's right. Jesus, you know the slope that I'm on. You know how my life is not going the way it should. You know, Lord, the sins I've committed. You know, Lord, what I've done to others. You know what I've done to myself. Lord, I want to be set free. I want to walk in liberty. I want to be free. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Set me free. Break the bonds that Satan has fastened upon me. In the name of Jesus, I call upon you and I say, please, Lord, come into my heart. Live in me. And from this moment on, I believe in you and I'm yours. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. And now I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Satan, I bind your power right now. I command you to loose these ones who prayed with me in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And now may the glory of the Lord fill you, and may you know his love from this moment on in Jesus' name. He loves you. Wherever you are, he loves you. Now, look, you just made the most important prayer of your life. And I want you to do something next. I want you to get started. I don't want to just leave you out there. I want to help you. And I have here a CD. It has 73 minutes of really concentrated teaching about what just happened to you, about the exchange life, about being born again, about what God has for you and what's coming up next. And I'll, I'll give it to you free, along with a little booklet that has the scriptures Easy reference. You just take this little booklet and open it up. It's got all these Bible verses uh, which give you the answers to many of the questions in life. So we'll send this to you. It's called A New Day. It's a beautiful little packet. We'll send it to you free. No financial charge at all. Just call in. Please pick up the telephone. Call and say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. I'm free. 1-800-759-0700. If for any reason the lines are busy, please be patient and call back. We'll be here for you all day long. 759-0700, 1-800-CHRISTY. Christy? Thank you, Pat. Well, I am here in the chat room, and coming up, we're going to bring it online with some of your questions like this one 
from Edward, who says, Pat, I've been betrayed by girls who say they love me. Does God have a match for everyone? Wouldn't we all like to know? Well, we're going to answer Edward's question and so much more when we bring it on. So don't go away. I didn't understand what love was. I didn't have a good example. I knew of God, and I often would think to myself, God, if you're real, help me in this situation. I told the Lord, I said, God, I don't have anything to offer you. It's just me and my little baby, and I don't have anything together. I had peace. It was so refreshing. He loves you so much that He died for you. And if He can do all of this in my life, He can do it for you. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said, it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried. And I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there, I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. To see this week's top on-demand videos, go to CBN.com. Well, the parents in our next story have three children they love and provide for. But not long ago, they feared the worst for their family when both mother and father began to go blind. I used to be a potter and brick maker, but I had to stop doing that because I couldn't see. Hanu worked hard to support his wife, Tijama, and their three children. But now, cataracts were causing him to go blind. Then, Tijama also developed cataracts. My loss of vision caused problems, not only for me, but also for my family, because they always had to help me. Tijama and Hanu didn't know how they would take care of their three children. Since they were Christians, they prayed to Jesus for help. Then, they heard an announcement coming from a loudspeaker mounted on a rickshaw. A free eye camp sponsored by Operation Blessing was going to be held in their area. When we heard about the free surgeries, it felt like Jesus came and took us to get our treatment. After doctors examined them, they were scheduled for their surgeries. When Tijama's bandages were removed, it was the first time she had seen clearly in years. I thank my Lord Jesus for helping me with the surgery. I couldn't see before, but now I can see. Hanu also had good news. I can see clearly. We won't have to beg. We can work and earn a living. We can take care of our children. Hanu is back to work making bricks and pottery. Tijama works in the fields and is taking care of her home and children. We thank God and all the people who sponsored our surgeries. We can see because of you. You know what, I love that. Even though we pray to God, do you know that God uses each of us to be the answer to that prayer? Did you know that? And so if you're a 700 Club partner, you were the one who answered that beautiful couple's prayer. And now because of that, their whole life has changed. Listen, that's what it's all about. It really is about just reaching out to those people that maybe you've never seen before, heard before, but you will definitely make a difference in their life. Will you consider doing that if you're not a 700 Club partner? Just 65 cents a day, $20 a month. And you want to know this? I got to tell you something that's really cool, that when you become either a 700 Club Gold partner or a 1,000 Club partner, not only do we want to give you this DVD series called Life Beyond the Grave, which I love, we'll actually give you more than one. We'll give you five. Crazy, right? You keep one, you give four away to those people who you just want to share and, and minister to the gospel with. It's This is an amazing DVD. It really is life-changing. And it's our gift to you when you become a 700 Club partner. So call the number right there or log on to CBN.com. Okay, so speaking of logging on, right. many folks have been logging on to our online chat room okay. throughout the entire show. And Let's so we're going to jump right in with a question. Edward says, Pat, 
I've been betrayed by, um, by girls who say they love me. Does God have a match for everyone? Uh, I think he puts the single in families, it says. I don't know if you say God has this, the perfect one for me, but I wonder why you got betrayed so often. I mean, were well, these girls stringing you along? It sounds awfully cruel. Are you gullible? Maybe they don't love you. Maybe they're just trying to get you out of their lives. I don't know what you're doing, but I think you ought to go back and, and see how you handle yourself with women. That's true. We you gotta wouldn't say that to somebody, would you, Christy? What? I wouldn't say what to somebody. Tell them you love them and you're just to no, leave them on. No, I sure would not. Well, I hope not. No. See, this is my thought process in life. I think people use the word love way too much. I, I mean, God says, you know, we're supposed to love our neighbor and yeah, love each yeah. other. Yeah. But, you know, people are like, oh, I love you. I love you. I don't love you half the time. I don't like you. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that's wrong. I love you. <laughs> All right. You're getting in deep. Let's, 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 all right. But the deal is, I think you're, you're putting too much. But That's true. Find a sincere up, Pat, Christian girl, somebody who shares your aptitudes, and the Lord will, will give you uh, something together. But forget all the surface, uh, you know, love you, love you, dear kind of stuff. It's all baloney. That's you true. Know, look at something deeper in the heart. All right, next question. I'm glad you cleaned it up. Okay, <laughs> here's Marie who says, what can I say to my 90-year-old grandmother when she criticizes my daughter, who I take it as Caucasian, for dating a black man? What do you think, Pat? Listen, she's 90 years old. What are you going to do with her? I mean, she's got her prejudices, and <laughs> they're deep-seated. It is what it is, right? Yeah. I guess. So, so well, Grandma, you, you, that, that's your, and I disagree with you, but you're entitled. <laughs> that's true. Well, you know, at first I used to think that maybe because she's older that you just kind of let her be, but listen, it's never too old to change and say, we all bleed the same color. That's my thought process in John life. John Wesley was riding along on a horse and he ran across this guy and he started talking about the Lord. And after a while he realized it was hopeless. And he said, and why should I argue with him anymore seeing he's a ship captain? I mean, it was kind of like enough. I, I give up. Well, and, uh, no, you just, I mean, grandma's grandma, let her, let her have her prejudice. So what, what are you going to do? She, she's set in her ways. All right. All right. Next question right. is from um, one of our viewers who says, right. I've accepted Jesus into my heart, but since then my life has actually gotten worse, not better. I came down with a mysterious virus that almost killed me. I lost my job and then my home. Oh, my Lord. How could these things be happening to me? Whoa. Uh, you used to belong to the devil somehow. I mean, he, he had charge of you. You didn't belong to Jesus. So you, he wants you back. And there's a breakthrough. You've got to come through to this thing, and you've got to say, Lord, I am yours regardless. And, but the thing of it is, you may be holding on to some from, from the past. You need to give up. I don't know what's back there, but to whatever it was, uh, you may have been involved in the occult. Something has gone on, but you need to renounce Satan, the underhanded works of darkness, and say, I renounce you in the name of Jesus, and I bind your power. And that, that's what's got to be done. You're talking about spiritual warfare here. This is, it isn't that the Lord's letting this happen to you. You know, your former boss wants you back working for him. All right, next question. Bottom line is God's a good God. He wants good for you. So don't let all these things kind of think that God right, wants bad for question. you. Benita says, my brother used to be a Christian, but he's since converted to Islam. Is a salvation void? Ooh, interesting question. Uh, you know what the Bible says? that If anybody uh, turns and... They make void the blood of Jesus Christ. How can they repent who have scorned so great a salvation? I tell you, anybody who would, I don't think your brother really knew the Lord. I don't think anybody who really knows the Lord could possibly be enticed by a, a restrictive uh, religion like Islam. I just can't see it. But I don't know what to say. I, all I would say is, in my opinion, he never really accepted Jesus. Well, tomorrow, from Hollywood to your house, primetime propaganda, you'll be finding an interesting premise. Today we leave you with these words from Psalm 107. He sent out his word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. 
This widow was so poor, she had to search for food for her children. Many times, all she could find was ant larvae. When her daughter became ill with a deadly parasite, you sent a free medical clinic that saved her life. You also gave this family a small poultry business so that they can support themselves. Your love ended their despair. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.